Hi everyone, and welcome to Mostly Math. Today, we'll be discussing Aaron Fest's theorem and, and the relationship between expectation values and classical laws. Aaron Fest's theorem just follows from the Schrodinger equation, which is I h bar d psi by dt is equal to h psi, where h is the Hamiltonian operator, p squared over 2m plus v, and p is, of course, minus i h bar d by dx, and we're going to note that H is permission for a real potential. This is true since H is a observable, the total energy of the system, therefore must be permission according to the postulates of quantum mechanics. We'll also be discussing the commutator of two operators, A and B, to be AB minus BA. Since operators do not necessarily commute in quantum mechanics, and we know the canonical commutation x with p is equal to i h bar, which we will not derive, but we will derive something very similar. Let's go ahead and write Schrodinger's equation in a slightly different form using Dirac's bra cat notation i h bar psi dot is equal to h psi, or isolating psi dot. 1 over i h bar, h on psi, and we'll take the Hermitian conjugate, Hermitian conjugate of this equation, knowing that h is Hermitian, get the bra version, minus 1 over i h bar psi h. Notice the order of these two is different. This is what will be the driving principle behind derivation of Aaron Fest's formula above. Go ahead and write what we've learned on the board to help us with it. Uh, fun fact, Aaron Fest's theorem follows only from the Schrodinger equation, and if you want to, you can go the other way around. Start with the Aaron Fest's theorem and derive the Schrodinger equation as well. So we know psi dot is equal to 1 over i h bar h psi, and the Brown version minus 1 of i h bar psi h. Okay, let's take the time derivative of the expectation value of an operator omega. Note, omega is a function of position, momentum, and time, all three independent variables. So if x is secretly a function of time, it does not matter in this context. In a certain state psi, psi omega psi, and now we'll use the product rule to simplify this, psi dot omega psi plus psi omega dot psi plus psi omega omega dot psi dot. We will write the terms in this order, just for clarity. Going to be 1 over i h bar psi um, omega omega h on psi minus 1 over i h bar psi h on omega psi plus the expectation value of psi dot where we drop the size since that were no longer useful to us equals 1 over i h bar in a state psi omega h minus h omega plus expectation value of psi dot, which after we drop the size here, replace this with the commutator is exactly what we want to show here on the right hand side. Now we have derived what is known become what is known as Aaron Fest's theorem, and it seems pretty abstract at this point. So we want to go ahead and apply it to some familiar operators to see what the gist of the theorem is. We will start off with the position operator, in some sense the simplest operator, just x itself. So we have the time derivative of position operator is equal to 1 over i h bar, expectation value of x with the Hamiltonian, which we replace as p squared over 2m plus v plus expectation value of x dot. 
which we discussed earlier is zero, since if you wanted to get something non-zero, you'd be discussing operators like um, x cosine omega t. There has to be an explicit time dependence at this stage to have something be non-zero. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this. 1 over i h bar, rotation of value, 1 over 2m x with p squared plus x with v of x and bracket. So this one's easy. It's zero since x and bx are simple functions of x. Think of v of x to be one half omega m, sorry, one half m omega squared x squared, just the harmonic oscillator potential that obviously can be with x. If you evaluate x with p squared, we have to use a commutator identity. We're going to need a with a with b c is equal to a with b times c plus b with b times a with c. I can just never remember this. If you have a way to remember this, feel free to tell me. I'm not going to derive this here, but if you wanted to, you could plus or minus b a c on both sides and then factor out from the light, right and the left respectively. It becomes 1 over i h bar, 1 over 2 m, then we have x with p times p plus p x with p. Notice x with p factors out. We evaluated it before anyways. 1 over 2i h bar m expectation value of i h bar. We talked about this. p plus p. Which becomes h bar cancel. This becomes 2p. Just the expectation value of p over m. Where we did use x with p equal to i h bar, just as previous reference. So we can re rearrange this, p bracket is equal to m d by dt x bracket, which sounds very similar to the definition of the momentum. In fact, this relation is equivalent to what we know from classical mechanics. But, spoiler alert, we'll see that the next one, which is arguably more important, does not quite obey classical laws, but only approximately. So let's now discuss the second most simple operator, P, the momentum. P by dt, expectation value of P equal to 1 over i h bar, expectation value of P is P squared over 2m plus V. And again, P dot is going to be zero since there's no time here. And we're just going to simplify this. We see that p with p squared is 0 since every operator commutes with itself. It becomes 1 over i h bar, expectation value of p with v of x. Let's go ahead and derive this in the ordinary way. We need to find the commutator of p with v of x. Go ahead and operate on a test function f of x. Instantly, this is exactly how you derive x with p is equal to i h bar. Same thing. p v f minus v p f, which is common factor minus i h bar d by dx v f minus v d f by dx. And we're going to get two terms that look pretty similar. First term is d v by dx times f plus v df by dx minus v df by dx. These two terms cancel. So this is actually going to be equal to minus i h bar dv by dx f. And now we're done with the test function so we can drop it. We get p with v is equal to PV or minus I H bar DV by DX. Great, almost done here. Let's go back to our main result. Uh, this is now going to be equal to 1 over I H bar 
minus I H bar dv by dx, which is simply minus dv by dx in brackets, which should look similar to Newton's second law, f equals ma, our p dot is minus the gradient of v, the potential. We will now discuss the similarity between this and classical laws and see how it relates to what we know. All right, let's write what we know down. We have learned that expectation value of P is equal to M D by DT. Expectation value of X looks like P equals MV. We also know that D by DT, expectation value of P, is equal to minus DV by DX. Now, first one is simpler has an obvious implication. This one actually does obey classical laws. This one does not, since if it were truly to obey Newton's second law, this would actually have to be equal to minus dv by d bracket x, which is not true for any potential with a degree greater than two. We're going to show this as an example. So, First, consider v of x is equal to 1 half m omega squared x squared. In this case, if we calculate bracket dv by dx, we obtain m omega squared x, which is, in this case, equal to dv by d bracket x. Good, works in that case. But if we go any higher, let's consider u of x one third lambda x cubed, which actually if you add these two together, you'll get an anharmonic oscillator, which is useful in quantum field theory. In this case, bracket dv by dx will be equal to lambda bracket of x squared, which is in general not equal to lambda bracket of x squared, which is what we would need, but we're really going to obey classical laws. We can see this because actually the uncertainty in x squared is bracket x squared minus bracket x squared, which is not equal to zero in general. So what can we say about this in general? Well, these two quantities, dv by d bracket x and dv by dx bracket will be approximately the same in most cases, but they will not always. So as the sum total of this lecture, we can now say that expectation values approximately obey, sorry, obey classical laws. That is the gist of this lecture today. Expectation values approximately obey classical laws. And just a historical note, what, what we have derived here is actually known as Arafat's theorem, since he didn't actually derive the more general operator relation. That was actually derived by Heisenberg, but there were more than enough things already named after Heisenberg, so we call both of them Arafat's theorem. Well, if you enjoyed this and want to see more, feel free to subscribe to my channel and join us next time. Have a great day.